Hello, welcome back to Sweet MTG, and welcome to Instant Deck Techs. In this series, we go over everything you need to build a certain commander. We'll go over the strategies and the types of cards needed you need to get the deck working. Any cards we mention will be down in the description below. In this video, we're going to be looking at Kalia of the Vast. It is one red, white, black for a 2 2 legendary creature, human cleric with flying. It has, whenever Kali of the Vast attacks an opponent, you may put an angel, demon, or dragon creature card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking that opponent. Ever since Kali was first printed back in Commander 2011, it's been one of the most popular commanders out there. It leads a deck that's trying to cheat as many large BCs into play as possible. This video will be a little different to some of our other deck techs. We'll be primarily focusing on building a Kalia deck that wants to play angels, demons, and dragon creatures. But when we get to our win cons, we'll also go over some cards if you want to focus on one tribe in particular. One thing to note with Kalia before we kick off is that because of the way it's worded, the creature we put into play comes in tapped and attacking. But because of the timing of this, they won't trigger cards that say when this creature attacks, at least not on the first swing. The next turn when you attack with them, you'll get that effect as normal. First up are some cards that enable us to cheat multiple things into play in a turn. These are cards that let us boost that cheater creature into play effect of Kalia, so we can make a scary board state super quickly. First up are cards that give us extra combat steps. As we've gone over, more attacking with Kalia means more creatures that we can put into play. So we have cards like Seize the Day, Relentless Assault, Aurelia the War Leader, Scourge of the Throne, and Morag Fury of Akum. These all give us extra combat steps, with Aurelia and Scourge of the Throne probably being the standouts here, as they themselves can be cheated in with Kalia. After those, you have cards like Stronic Resonator and Ishin Two Heavens as One, which can double up that attack trigger of Kalia. This means each time we swing, we'll put two creatures into play from our hand every time we attack. Then you also have Helm of the Host, which can make copies of Kalia, so again, we can cheat more things into play. Then when we do have something huge in play, we can equip the Helm to that so we can get copies of that big creature as well. And then for some redundancy, we have cards like Quicksilver Amulet. With all the large things we'll have in this deck, making them only cost 4 mana, and effectively giving them flash will be very solid, especially if Kalia is ever removed. Next up is some protection. Kalia will be a bit of a magnet for removal, and it also has to swing into combat to get its effect going, so having plenty of ways of keeping Kalia around will be essential. First up, we can give it some repeated protection, with Giver and Mother of Runes. These can either guarantee Kalia gets through damage unblocked, or can help save it from a removal spell. Then there is a card like Whisper Silk Cloak, which guarantees Kalia will get damage through, and the added Shroud will mean it can never be targeted. Next up is Dark Steel Plate, which makes Kalia indestructible, so again it can keep attacking through every turn, and not die to our opponent's interaction. And then after that we have Reconnaissance. With it out, you can remove Kalia from combat at any point, so after blockers are declared, but before damage, for example. So importantly, we still get that attack trigger, but Kalia won't die if blocked. Then because there is a step in combat after damage, you can remove it after damage has been dealt, to give it pseudo vigilance as well, which is kind of neat. Then we have Robe of Stars, which we can either activate before blockers are declared so it doesn't die in combat, or in response to any removal spell. Importantly, this also saves Kalia from a board wipe, which is huge. And then we have the classic Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots, which while they don't help Kalia survive combat, protecting it from targeted removal, and also having the benefit of giving it haste so it can swing through the turn it comes down. Moving on to our card draw, we're looking to run between 8 and 10 bits here, so we'll always have a big creature in our hand to cheat in with Kalia. One way to do that is to have the card draw on the big creature themselves. Cards like Battle Angels of Tyre, Kalia's Zenith Seeker, Blood Gift Demon, Harvester of Souls, Dragon Mage, Phyllis Broker of Blood all have some form of card advantage on them, which we can leverage to refill our hand while hitting for a ton of damage. Then we have enchantments that draw us cards, with things like Phyrexian Arena and Black Market Connections. These are always really solid options in any deck that can run them. For some more budget friendly options, you can look to run some one time instants and sorceries, like Faithless Looting, Sign and Blood, Painful Truths, and Read the Bones. These are always really solid options when you need some more ways of seeing cards in the game. Moving over to our ramp, we want to run slightly more than a regular deck, as we will want to get to a point where we can hard cast our big threats. First up is Sword of the Animist, which gets a land from our deck whenever we attack with the equipped creature. As we're going to be wanting to swing with Kalia every turn, this is absolutely perfect for this deck. Then you have a card like Wayfarer's Bauble, which is one of the best ways of ramping in any deck that isn't running green. And then we have the bulk of our ramp, which will be made up of mana rocks that cost two or less. You have your soul rings, your signets, your talismans, mindstone, and then felwar stone. There's plenty of options out there here. On top of those, you can also run a couple of big mana rocks to make casting your big creatures that little bit easier. In any three plus color deck, I do like Chromatic Lantern. Then you have Thran Dynamo and Gilded Lotus, which give you the extra reach you need to reliably cast something huge. 
Moving over to interaction, like with most decks this will depend on your playgroup, but the general rule of starting with 8 bits and then going up the more competitive everyone is will still apply. Starting off with some interaction on big creatures, we have some targeted removal with Angel of Despair and Drekaseth Moor of Flames. Then we have Steel Hellkite and Balefire Dragon, which are great ways of keeping an opponent's board in check. Then as we're in Mardu, we have some of the best bits of instant sorcery based interaction available. This is where the bulk of your interaction will come from, so pick up the bits that answer as wide a range of threats as possible, but also suit your budget. I would also want to run a little bit of recursion in this deck, as it's a great way of allowing us to get multiple creatures into play very quickly. First up we have Raya Dawnbringer, which on our upkeep lets us bring anything we want from our graveyard back straight into play. Then we have Liesa Forgotten Archangel, which brings any creature of ours back to our hand when it dies, ready to be cheated in again. This also really messes up our opponent's plans by exiling their creatures when they die, rather than them just going to the graveyard. Then for some recursion on enchantments, we have Phyrexian Reclamation, which can bring a creature back to our hand ready to be cheated in all over again. And then we have Animate Dead, which just returns the creature we need straight into play. Moving over to our wing cons, we have some truly awesome creatures that we can cheat into play with Kalia. First up is Master of Cruelties, which when it attacks and isn't blocked, puts a player's life total to 1. The normal downside they can only attack alone doesn't mean anything in this deck, as we can put it into play tapped and attacking with Kalia, so it can get in with the rest of the team. Then we have Terror of the Peaks, which deals damage to any target whenever a creature comes into play equal to that creature's power. With all the big things coming into play, this should be throwing around a whole heap of damage. Talking of damage, nothing ends a game quite like Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight. Doubling all the damage we deal to our opponents while halving what they give to us. This is a haymaker and a half. Then we have Terror of Mount Velus, which gives a whole team double strike out of nowhere. A surefire way to take out an opponent or two when they least expect it. And then there is Avacyn Angel of Hope, which gives a whole team indestructible. Outside of a well-timed exile effect, this can win a game of Commander by itself, while also giving Kalia that added level of protection. After that we have Lord of the Void, which hits like a truck and starts ripping our opponent's creatures from their deck, ready to be turned against them. These I personally think are some of the strongest options out there, but I know some of these aren't too cheap. But one of the best parts about this deck is that they can be replaced with cheaper options and they'll still hit for a ton of damage when cheated in with Kalia, so you can really make this section your own and run what you like. Another great thing about Kalia is that you can also go down the tribal route with it, focusing on either angels, demons or dragons. If you go down this route, you lose some of the utility creatures that either draw us cards or act as removal, but you do get to run some additional Tribal Matters cards that help bind the whole deck together. Cards like Herald's Horn and Urza's Incubator help you ramp ahead by making the mana costs of the tribe you've chosen cheaper. Then a card like Icon of Ancestry, which buffs them up while also letting us dig for some extra cards. Then Bellbase Portal is another great cheat into play card that we get to run, as it cares about creature types. If you pick Angels, you get cards like Giada, Font of Hope, that helps us with some ramping. You have Righteous Valkyrie, which gains us life and can also buff up our whole team. Failure's Retribution makes us an angel, then turns all our angels into removal, and then after that it just wins us the game. And then we have Rampage of Valkyries, which makes removing our angels an absolute misery. If you're going demons, you get cards like Bloodspeaker, which lets us tutor up the best demons into our hand that turn off the turn we can cheat into play. You get an awesome alternate win condition with Liliana's Contract that also draws us 4 cards, and then you just get to run more of the best demons out there, with things like Vagaroth Blood Sky Sire, Burning Rune Demon, and Demon Lord Belzenog. If dragons are your thing, then there are plenty of options out there for you as well. Dragon's Horde is a great bit of ramp and card draw. Then Crux of Fate can be a one sided board wipe that can win us the game. Cards like Dragon Tempest and Scourge of Valkas are great at throwing around damage to any target that you want and then Lathless, Dragon Queen, and Ultrava Hellkite are obscenely powerful dragon tribal cards that make a scary board state in no time. Rounding off the deck with some utility lands, we can't run too many as we are 3 colours. But a card like Rogue's Passage that makes Kalia unblockable will be fantastic, and then Command Beacon is a great way of lowering that command attacks just when we need it. I also like cards that can give either Kalia or a creature we've hardcast haste, as it'll mean our opponents will always have to be thinking about what we're doing next. Then lastly we have Spine Rock Knoll, which is a really good way of cheating something into play, as this deck will not struggle to deal 7 damage to an opponent. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We've recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base, which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck tech on. Thank you very much for watching.